Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. MashaAllah, welcome to uh, all of the listeners of Radio 76. And uh, I'm hopeful that today, inshaAllah, bi idhnillah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I will be able uh, to share some information with the community that will be of benefit to us understanding the concept of martyrdom within Islam and uh, how that relates also to this particular program about Islam, the way of life, and to understand that martyrdom, being part of Islam, is also part of uh, the way of life uh, accepted within Islam, and that it is not something that we as Muslims should frown upon, it is not something that we should detest, rather it is something that we should we should accept, we should uh, embrace. It is also actually something that we should covet, because if you look at the teachings of our deen, how the concept of martyrdom is dealt with within the Qur'an, and how the concept of martyrdom is dealt with within the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu as well as his way of life, then we will see that martyrdom was something that was very coveted um, by uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi and uh, his companions. So uh, in that regard, I am hopeful that we will come to appreciate uh, the value of martyrdom within Islam because we will find that people who try to create a particular negative perception about Islam and who try to create you know, a negative mindset um, within us as Muslims and amongst us as a Muslim community, we tend to create a very negative image of martyrdom. And they they create the sort of, you know, um, uh, uh, like a monster kind of um, uh, stigma when it comes to martyrdom. And for that purpose, sometimes um, it is very useful for us just to revisit these kind of uh, important concepts uh, and important aspects of our deen so that we should come to realize as Muslims um, what is the correct stance regarding um, these matters and also for us to appreciate when we do have uh, situations arising uh, within the Muslim ummah globally um, as we do find now currently in the plight of our Palestinian brothers and system, sisters rather um, uh, undergoing and enduring a genocide um, and uh, the loss of life, the loss of property um, that, they, that they are currently experiencing um, and how those who are seeking to assist them are also engaged in this entire ordeal that this form of uh, a loss of life, uh, loss of property, etc. It is something praiseworthy within Islam um, uh, and it is something that um, seeks to fulfill certain objectives uh, within Islam. So uh, be that as it may by way of introduction, um, uh, to be very honest, um, I wasn't really quite sure where to actually start. Um, you know, because uh, it is one thing to speak of something from an academic perspective, but it is not something that... Um, I've really experienced uh, in my life in terms of knowing people personally, other than, um, you know, probably some of the Palestinian people that I met during my few visits there. Um, uh, so, um, uh, because we've not been able to be in contact with them. So, we are hopeful um, that uh, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, granted them uh, to have passed away. Um, during this ordeal that they are currently facing in in Palestine, that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala had blessed them um, with the the coveted station and the coveted death of martyrdom. Just as a starting point, um, uh, for all of us, obviously, there are very many things in our lives that we hold very dear to ourselves, and uh, in that regard, also um, the things that are pertinent to our lives, we regard those things to be ours. You know, my house, um, my wife, my children, my belongings. And and this is also a notion that uh, we need to actually correct in order to help us understand and, and, and deal with the concept of martyrdom and the concept of loss, especially if that loss relates um, to the uh, attainment and the achievement of an objective of deen. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informs us in the Quran, Ba'da a'udhu billahi min shaytan rajim إن الله اشترى من المؤمنين أنفسهم وأموالهم بأن لهم الجنة. That indeed Allah subhanahu wa taala has purchased from the believers أنفسهم their own selves, meaning whatever belongs to them, our life, our wealth, our capabilities, our abilities. Allah subhanahu wa taala has purchased this from us in exchange وأموالهم and our wealth. بِأَنَّ لَهُمُ الْجَنَّةِ 
so that through this we are able to achieve Jannah. In, in other words, we pay with what Allah Ta'ala has blessed and favored us with. Allah Ta'ala gifts us certain things. Allah Ta'ala enables us with certain abilities. And when we utilize this for the purpose of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the fulfillment of our purpose of life. And in addition to this, we utilize it for the upliftment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's deen. Then we will find that this is, one of the ulama mentioned it, you know, to be a shortcut towards Jannah. Utilizing what Allah has favored and enabled a person with to achieve the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the upliftment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's deen. In exchange for this, Allah Ta'ala gives us Jannah. So there is an exchange. Uh, and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala's exchange with us, it is a true one. It is a promised one. In addition to this, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala also advises us, you know, Ba'al Mashaitan Rajim, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu hal adullukum ala tijaratin tunjikum min adabin alim. تؤمنون بالله ورسوله وتجاهدون في سبيل الله بأموالكم وأنفسكم. You know, and إلى آخر الآية. That آية continues with some of the various promises that Allah Taala gives us. But Allah Taala addresses us as believers. So we should therefore understand that the striving for Deen, of which the ultimate sacrifice would be the attainment of martyrdom, is Something that Allah Ta'ala connects to our belief in Allah Ta'ala, to our Iman. Ya Ridina Amanu, Hal Adulukum Ala Tijaratin. And then Allah Subhanahu tells us, Should I, as your creator, your sustainer, your Rabb, should I indicate to you Tijaratin to a trade? And this is the same trade which I referenced in the first ayah that Allah Ta'ala is speaking about, that Allah Ta'ala has given us in exchange for our lives and our wealth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us Jannah. And this trade, Allah ta'ala says, what will happen with this trade? Tunjikum min adabin alim. That it will indeed save you from a grievous punishment. And this grievous punishment is the punishment of the fire of Jahannam. So we, in exchange for being saved from the fire of Jahannam, Allah ta'ala barters with us and trades with us for our lives and our wealth so that we may be saved from the fire of Jahannam and entered into Jannah. And what is the starting point of this? Tu'minuna billahi wa rasulihi wa tujahiduna fi sabilillahi bi amwalikum wa anfusikum. And then ultimately that ayah ends with the statement, ذَلِكَ الْفَوْزُ azim. That indeed is the greatest success. Uh, so in this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions essentially the conditions for the attainment of martyrdom. And what is the first condition? Tu'minuna billah. And the second condition? Wa rasulihi. In other words, tu'minuna billahi wa tu'minuna bi rasulihi. Wa tujahiduna fi sabilillahi bi amwalikum wa anfusikum. The third condition means to continue striving in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with your wealth and your life. So from this we can understand that for the acceptance and the attainment of martyrdom, there are essentially three conditions. Two conditions relate to our belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in His Messenger. And the third condition relates to our efforts in striving. Now, just to briefly elaborate on these three conditions, believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as we are required to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as per the teachings of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So it is essential for us to ensure that the correctness of our belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second condition relating to the belief in the Prophet also means accepting all of the teachings of the Prophet that we confine ourselves to the teachings of the Prophet in the sum total of our life. Therefore it is essential for us to understand that martyrdom is as our program suggests part of the Islamic way of life. So you cannot therefore separate martyrdom from the Islamic way of life. This program is about the Islamic way of life and this particular segment or my presentation about how martyrdom fits into the Islamic way of life. So therefore it's important for us to understand that the very first two conditions for the acceptance and attainment of martyrdom relates to the adoption of the true, complete Islamic way of life. As 
stipulated by the Quran and the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And thereafter, the condition is, وَتُجَاهِدُونَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ بِأَمْوَالِكُمْ وَأَنفُسِكُمْ And that you thereafter strive fi sabili Allah. Now this fi sabili Allah, obviously, it is not understood, you know, in its in its literal, you know, um, statement, the zahir meaning, because fi sabili Allah is actually a a a, a term indicating a variety of activities leading one to the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So therefore it is mentioned that various other actions are also considered to be and referred to as fi sabilillah. But the objective of all of those efforts and all of those striving is the attainment of the inculcation of the Islamic way of life within my own life and the establishment of the Islamic way of life as per the Quran and the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to be established throughout the entire world in the lives of all of mankind. Because all of mankind have been created as the servants and slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as such, it is also their responsibility to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the manner that will be pleasing to Allah ta'ala. And the only way to achieve this is the adoption of the Islamic way of life. So therefore it is our belief that we are not only required to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on an individual basis but rather it is such that we have to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a collective we will find in surah fatiha Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala requires from a person even in the individual prayer when a person prays by himself his salah individually he must still say in surah fatiha iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in and iyaka na'budu is in the plural form you alone we worship and you alone we seek assistance from so we have this concept um, emphasized of collectiveness and this collectiveness incorporates the entire mankind so as such the responsibility of each and every muslim is the entire mankind so part of achieving this is striving in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by sacrificing some of our time, by sacrificing some of our wealth, by utilizing our capabilities and our abilities, you know, um, uh, using our intellectual um, capabilities, our acumen, um, uh, using um, what is referred to, you know, as our, our fikr. Fikr means a person's worry, the person's concern. So as such, we as Muslims can never really be in a state of contentment whilst there are Muslims from amongst us who have not adopted the Islamic way of life and practicing it. And whilst there are non-Muslims who have also not even adopted Islam as their way of life and are not following it. So we should therefore be perpetually in this concern and this worry how we can uplift mankind by way of introducing them to the gift and the blessing of the Islamic way of life. And for this purpose, we need to continue striving to such an extent where when the demands come for us to lay down our lives, we would be prepared to do so. And that is where this um, uh, martyrdom represents, you know, the epitome of this commitment to striving for the uh, promotion and the commitment to striving for the establishment of Islam and the Islamic way of life. And the promise for this is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant the person Jannah. Now, it is not just that the person will be granted Jannah. That is why we find that um, uh, with regards to Jannah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also tells us in the Quran, Ba'd al-Shaitan al-Rajim, Am hasibatum an tadukhru al-jannatu wa lamma ya'atikum mathalu al-ladhina khalaw min qabalikum masatum al-ba'sa'u wa dharra'u wa zulzilu. Do you, do, consider, do you consider that you will be entered into Jannah? Wa lamma ya'atikum mathalu al-ladhina khalaw min qabalikum while what has befallen those before you has not also befallen you. And then Allah refers to the, 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 the challenges and the strive, the striving and the struggles. 
that that afflicted them masatum al ba'sa'u wa dharra'u wa zulzilu when they were afflicted by 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 hungers and trials you know and 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 earthquakes so these are the kind of 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 matters challenges uh, that will come to face the person in his efforts to uplift and establish the islamic way of life and this is why this martyrdom is is such a such a coveted station in the the religion of islam because it means that this person who has attained martyrdom he has in reality not attained it cheaply it was something that required a very great sacrifice it was something that required a very great determination and it was something that this person willingly was prepared to undertake being aware of the challenges that the person had to face so that is why you know um uh, it requires a great amount of courage to achieve martyrdom and very often we will find that you know in 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 the modern era um because we've become unfortunately very materialistic very attached to our material um uh, possessions and 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 our material comforts it is very difficult at times for people to have the courage to actually make that sacrifice um of these 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 material comforts that we have but that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we will find Allah the first mentions be amwalikum wa anfusikum because the person who starts by being prepared to sacrifice from amongst his wealth by being prepared to sacrifice from from his time his belongings etc the din of Allah ta'ala that is the person that will ultimately reach that stage where the person becomes prepared to actually sacrifice his life so this uh, achievement of martyrdom it is very coveted but it is also not very easy and at the same time allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um uh, advises us regarding those who have actually made the sacrifice to give their lives for the deen of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ta'ala informs us wa la tahsabanna alladhina qutilu fi sabil allah amwat bal ahya'un 'inda rabbihim yurzaqun do not consider those who have passed away who have been slain in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala amwat that they are dead bal ahya'un rather they are alive inda rabbihim subhanallah you know this ahya'un inda rabbihim you know I, i i don't even really have the capacity to explain to you what the implication of this is because when we find that in the quran allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to the torturing of the wife of fir'aun asia uh, and as she was being tortured she made dua to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and she said to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rabbi bini ba- indaka baitan oh allah build for me a house by you indaka or near you and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that those who have made the sacrifice to give their life to the deen of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inda rabbihim that they are by their lord by their rabb yurzaqun and they are being sustained they are being provided with sustenance by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in another ayah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also indicates to us this great status of the martyrs that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions for all may you take allah or rasul for all a ikama alladhina an amala alayhim min an nabiyyina wa siddiqina wa shuhada'i wa salihin that those people who obey allah and allah's rasul again we come back to those two initial conditions of the correctness of the iman in allah ta'ala which the demands the obedience to Allah Ta'ala, the correctness in the belief of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which demands the following of the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And whoever continues striving to uphold this in their lives, and whoever continues striving to bring this as a reality into the lives of others and all of mankind, and those who are prepared to strive against those who oppose it, and strive against those who seek to you know to 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 um, obliterate it or negate it uh, and to seek to destroy it then these are the ones who will be from amongst the the, the messengers and the siddiqin wa shuhada wa salihin so here we can find that to be a martyr is indeed a great uh status you know that it is mentioned along with the stations of prophethood and to be a siddiq in the in the cause of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's deen i also would like to however emphasize the importance of sincerity because ulama have mentioned that we basically find um uh, three kinds 
of martyrs. You find three kinds of martyrs. Uh, the one martyr being that person who is a martyr in the dunya as well as the akhirah. The second being the person who is a martyr in the dunya but will not be regarded a martyr in the akhirah. The third being the person who is a martyr in the akhirah whilst not being considered a martyr in the dunya. So the first category, those who are considered martyrs in the dunya as well as in the akhirah are those who complied with these three conditions. Number one, they obeyed Allah Ta'ala, they obeyed the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and with sincerity they continued striving until they were able to reach a stage where they were able to give their lives. And in giving their lives they did so sincerely and purely only for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and they lost their life in this dunya for the cause of striving for deen. Then we will find that this person is considered to be a martyr in this world as well as a martyr in the year after. Then the second category of the person who would not be a martyr in the dunya but well uh, would be a martyr and not in the akhirah is that person who complied with some of these conditions but the one main condition that was failing was the sincerity for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is why it is also found in mentioning the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu so this refers to what we apparently perceive as human beings. We apparently see a person striving for deen. We apparently see him also losing his life even for deen. But the reality is with Allah Ta'ala that the person did not meet the requirement of sincerity whilst doing it for the sake of Allah Ta'ala. Such was the condition of the hadith mentioned that a person will be asked on the day of Qiyamah, why did you give your life? The person will say, oh Allah, I strove in your deen and I sacrificed my life for your pleasure. Then Allah will tell the person, Kadhabta, you are lying. You, are, you did this only for the sake of people calling you a brave person and you did this for the sake of achieving some worldly gain. In another narration, it's also mentioned that a person in the time of the Prophet ﷺ, he was striving very hard in the path of Allah Ta'ala and, he, and he, he lost his life. And when people praised him, the Prophet ﷺ said that you are praising him, but that is not the reality of his condition. In spite of having, imagine this person as a result of dying in the in the so-called cause of Allah Ta'ala and path of Allah Ta'ala, he did not achieve martyrdom. In fact, this person was not considered to be a martyr. In fact, this person was not even considered to be a companion of the Prophet ﷺ. Why? Because the person was not sincere in striving in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the third is the category of people that are not considered martyrs in the dunya but are considered martyrs in the akhirah. Here's a, there's a big list of these kinds of people. And may Allah grant us to be from amongst them. A person who passed away in the plague, person who passed away from a stomach disease, fire, drowning, and a mother who passed away in, 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 in childbirth. So these are also considered to be from amongst those people who be considered martyrs in the life year after. May Allah Ta'ala grant us all to appreciate the value of martyrdom and to see how it will be possible for us to at least inculcate in our hearts the desire for martyrdom like how Khalid bin Walid had the desire to become a martyr and he was granted that station even though he passed away in his bed. Sayyidina Urm bin Khattab similarly had the desire for martyrdom uh, and his desire and dua was to have become a martyr in the city of the Prophet and Allah Ta'ala granted him when he was stabbed whilst performing his Fajr Salah and subsequently passed away from that wound. So may Allah Ta'ala inculcate in all of us the desire for the Islamic way of life, the conviction in the successfulness of living an Islamic way of life and that the ultimate pinnacle for us would be to achieve martyrdom by giving our lives and our wealth for the upliftment of deen. May Allah grant us all tawfiq wa akhiru dawana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.